Okay, um, this is a short lecture about how to write a good paragraph for a technical piece of writing. <coughs> I, I suspect that many of you have heard these topics before um, and have heard some information, lecture, whatever, <coughs> on how to write a good paragraph, but I think it's so important that um, I wanted to make sure that all of you got this information. And there's also some aspects of uh, writing for a technical essay um, that you should know about. So, um, it wasn't just me um, who thought about making uh, this the first lecture uh, about writing and about the uh, elements that we see in a technical piece of writing. Um, your textbook, uh, Strunk and White, makes this point about making the paragraph the unit of construction or unit of composition. And that is, if you have a good paragraph, um, that's like a big part of the battle, having a good piece of writing. Um, if your paragraphs are well constructed, um, flow nicely, um, and make sense, uh, that is a long way to writing a good piece of, uh, of technical writing. So th this is all described in a very, uh, probably much better than I could ever say, in this chapter that's in Strunk and White. So I recommend that you take a look at that. So um, let's talk a little bit about um, just in uh, kind of in the abstract about what makes a good paragraph and then we're going to go walk through an example. Um, the example I'm going to pick and work on is about writing a paragraph for a results section of a scientific paper. So that's not something that you will be doing, but um, it's it's close enough that I think it's you, you're going to be, you're, you will learn from it. So the, uh, so let's start with just the theory, I guess, and then we'll talk about one specific example. So you always want to begin with a thesis sentence. I've heard some folks in the class talk about the topic sentence. Both um, terms have been used. And basically, this is a sentence, usually at the, at the first uh, sentence of the paragraph, not always, but usually, especially in science writing, this is usually the first one. Um, and it kind of sets the tone um, for the whole paragraph. And that's going to be the judge of, by which uh, you should be looking at the organization of the paragraph. And you will be asked, um, associated with this lecture, to judge whether or not the paragraph has a good uh, topic or, or thesis sentence, and also to suggest one for a paragraph. Um, so we, I want to make sure that you uh, understand that concept. And then basically the rest of the paragraph um, are, are sentences that develop the thesis. This is the idea. They provide data, that, and that's what will distinguish a technical uh, piece of writing, a paragraph in the technical piece as opposed to some other form of writing. Um, so yeah, how you work this thing. Okay, so yeah, so also what's different about technical writing is that you use numbers. Um, not, not, not necessarily every paragraph, of course, but when you, instead of saying something's just bigger or smaller or faster or slower, you want to give numbers to back that up. Um, and here's just one example of that. So. Uh, it may not necessarily be the, the size of the weak fish uh, uh, and the size of the rockfish, but just say it's something like twofold bigger or more abundant. Um, and, but you want to kind of strike a balance and not quote numbers too much because that can overwhelm the text. And we'll give it, uh, talk about an example about, and about that in a minute. Um, and then the final part um, is is kind of ending with a sentence that kind of gets back to the thesis sentence. Now, I, I, as I think about my own paragraphs and other writing, uh, there are a lot of great paragraphs that, that you don't have this type of sentence. Um, but it's something to think about, especially if it's a, if it's a longer paragraph that has a lots, of, lots of data in it, lots of numbers. Um, it's good to kind of step back and, and kind of remind the reader what the point was about all those numbers and to kind of uh, uh, sum it all up uh, to uh, to kind of bring the all those numbers and data to to some uh, take-home message. Now it's not going to be a grand take-home message, it's just one paragraph, but it has some type of uh, uh, a message that the reader can remember. Okay, so as I said, uh, we're going to talk about one piece of data um, and one figure, in, in, in fact, that would be, uh, say, for a, a results section of a scientific paper. Not too scientific. This is about basketball. Um, uh, 
I used to play basketball. Um, I kind of gave it up. It's just way, it was way too hard on my knees, and everyone else was getting y much younger that I was playing against. And um, anyway, I uh, won't go more into that. So these are some actual data from from the some games. I used to play every Thursday night at the local school um, here. And so this graph shows shooting percentages for two types of shots. I hope you know what a three-point shot is versus a layup. I was giving this talk a version of it um, in Europe, and they didn't know what a layup was. Um, anyway, you can see that it varied over the years. Um, so as I said, this you will not be writing probably about specific figures. Maybe um, a figure would be so important that you will be describing it in your essays. Um, but you will be, be certainly dealing with numbers and, and, and data, and so that's what is to be learned um, from this discussion about this specific uh, figure. Okay, let's look at one paragraph. So what we're going to do now is walk through, uh, I believe, three different versions of this paragraph, and you, as you can guess, the first one is not so good, and the third one is closer to being the, the right one. So here's one. Figure one shows that Kirschman's shooting percentage was constant for several years. After 1990, an increase in the percentage of made three-point shots was observed. The percentage of made layups decreased. Okay, so now the question is, what's wrong with this? And I hope you can see already, based on our discussion, what was that, Tuesday, um, that this is a really short paragraph. And that's, so that's one of the easiest things to, to uh, deduce about your paragraphs is their size. So the fact that this is very short is a danger size sign. Now, all short paragraphs are not necessarily bad paragraphs. There are times when the short, a short paragraph, maybe even as short as one sentence, is the right paragraph for that particular point of your essay. But in general, if you see short paragraphs, it's a, it's a sign that something needs to be done. So that's the first thing that's wrong with it. The other thing that's wrong with it is, is this, uh, is, is, the, is the first sentence. It's really not. If we go back to the data, see if I. Can go back. Um, you know, there's there's two different things happening, or at least two different things happening here. We have, first of all, two different types of shots, and then also there's big difference in the way those uh, percentages changed over time. Um, you know, they were kind of constant for a while, and then layups went down, and three-point shot percentages went up. So, so the first sentence here says something about the shooting percentage was constant. Well, that's only about half the graph, right? Um, so, so anyway, that's those are some of the problems with the with the with the uh, paragraph. First of all, it's very short. Um, this thesis, thesis sentence is not great. In fact, it's no. I would say it's not a thesis sentence at all. Um, one thing that's peculiar about uh, results sections is you'll see that many authors will talk about figure sh one shows, or another device where they'll say is figure one gives the data about, in this case, shooting percentages. That's kind of wasted space. Um, you know, it's, in some ways, it's insulting to be told what Figure One shows, as if we can't deduce what is in Figure One. Um, and also, do we need to have this? It's kind of a, a weak way of beginning. And also, um, this is very, very, um, uh, you know, uh, not very precise, not very uh, concrete about you know how big of an increase was was it? Um, how big of a decrease? Uh, did the uh, percentage of made layups uh, go down? Um, and then finally, so there's no data here at all, right? There's no data to support what's going on here. Um, and then finally, uh, the passive voice. I, I'm sure you've heard about trying to avoid the passive voice. That is, you want to use the active when possible. Now, there will be times, and we'll talk about this um, at some point in the class, in the course, that the passive voice, in fact, is the right way of going about it. Um, and in fact, Strunk and White makes a big point about using the active voice. Um, okay, so let's back up. I hope everyone knows what the passive versus active. So if this is passive, right? It was observed. Something's happening to the percentage. It's being observed by by someone standing on the sidelines, right? Um, this is the active. The percentage of made layups decreased. So it's just it's just a straightforward. Um, it decreased. It went down. Um, so generally, you want to use the active uh, because it's more vigorous. Uh, it's it's more direct. Usually easier to understand. 
However, there are times, as I implied, that the passive is the more appropriate voice to use. And as I was saying, I got a little bit sidetracked there. The Strunk and White make this makes this point about the active voice being really important. Because uh, Pickner, I think I mentioned his name, Stephen Pickner, who pointed out that actually, if you look at all the sentences in Strunk and White, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. They should be embarrassed. Strunk and White should have been strunk. Both of them are dead now, so I guess they're passive. Their embarrassment. Anyway, they actually use the passive more so than the active. Now that book, that little book, is really well written. So there, there were they made the right choices in making the using the passive versus the active. Um, so uh, it's not true that you should always use the active. Sometimes the passive is more appropriate. Anyway, that's a really long, much more than you probably want to hear about active versus passive. But in general, use the active. Okay, let's look at this graph again. Remind ourselves of these great data. Um, Three-point shots uh, went up after 1990. Layoffs went down. But until uh, uh, before that, it was pretty constant. Let's look at another version of this paragraph. Uh, Kirchner's shooting percentage was constant for several years, figure one. So at least we solved the problem of saying figure one shows, got rid of that. However, the percentage of made layups decreased from 55.5% in 1975 to 43% in 1990 to 15% in 2000. The average minutes per game remained about the same during this period, figure three. In contrast, three point uh, percentages decreased, increased from 45% to 7% in 2000, figure one. The decrease in the percentage of made layups indicates that Kirchman is getting too old to play basketball. Okay, so now the question is what's wrong with this paragraph? Well, um, again, this is a little bit better um, way of beginning this paragraph, but again we have the same problem. Remember that the, the fact that it was constant is only half the story, right? Um, the other half of the story was the changes. So the fact that the paragraph starts off by saying it was constant doesn't give you a full flavor of what's going to happen in the paragraph, right? So it's not a great topic sentence or thesis sentence. Um, so the, remember the previous version of this paragraph did not have any numbers, did not cite any data, just cited this increase and decrease. Well, now we got data, right? We got all sorts of data. But we've kind of gone over to the other um, extreme. We've gotten too much data, too many numbers, I would say. You know, especially this one here, you know, the 43% in 1990. It kind of breaks up the sense. Um, a little bit of pet peeve, you know, why do we really need to know the percentage down to the 10th the, uh, place, 55.5%? Um, I would say even, you know, 50% is close enough for what we need to know. Um, you know, in baseball, they cite batting averages to the third decimal point. Uh, way too much information, but there's no way we're going to change that. So anyway, um, a little bit too many data. Well, too many uh, uh, numbers cited here. We'll get to that point in a minute. Um, average num minutes per game. Um, well, where did that come from, right? It seems like a little bit out of left field. So we don't have a great thesis sentence here. But it's clear that this minutes per game doesn't quite make sense. Now, probably what the author is, you know, not saying here, and maybe that could this thing about minutes per game could be somehow crammed into this paragraph. If somehow, if the author would have said something like, maybe the shooting percentage uh, changed because of the average amount of time that Kirchman was playing, but in fact it remained the same. I would think even then it's gone outside this paragraph. It's not following the main idea that this paragraph is all about. Um, again, we don't have a great thesis sentence here to kind of guide us. That's why the thesis or topic sentence is so important, getting that right first, and that will help guide us what goes through the rest of the paragraph. Um, and then that's the, probably the, the, um, the, the, the uh, criticism with this last sentence. It's, not, it's, it's a conclusion like, it kind of gets away from the data. But it's a little bit too far from the data, it's, I would argue. Again, um, it's not in keeping with, with, with what this paragraph should be all about, which is about the percentage of uh, made uh, layups and three-point shots. Um, and this is getting into more of the explanation, which is a, you know, something that should be dealt with in another paragraph. 
Okay, that this just sums up all those points I was trying to make. No real thesis sentence still. Um, too much data taken directly from the data from the graph. Bad bad transition at a minimum. Um, but I would argue probably that um, it shouldn't belong in this paragraph at all. And and that this is more of a detail about writing the results paragraph. Um, you can't re uh, refer to a figure like in this case figure three before you've discussed figure two. We perhaps in a previous paragraph we've discussed figure two, but um, but there's chances that we we have not. And then finally, the concluding sentence it is a concluding sentence, but it's way beyond what the figure is all about, what the data is all about, and what this paragraph is really all about. Okay, once more, here's the data again. Constant um, percentages for several years. Three-point shots went up, layups went down. And here's, here's I think, a pretty good paragraph. Now, there's various versions of this that you could come up with. Um, I gave a version of this talk, as I mentioned, in Europe, and a colleague of mine suggested other ways of, of beginning the, 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 the paragraph off, the topic sentence. But let's just look at this. Um, we examined the percent of made layups and three-point shots attempted by Kirchman over 25 years starting in 1975. So that's that's really what the paragraph's all about. It doesn't say what happened, right? It doesn't say what happened. It just says we're going to be looking at these data. Uh, the percentage of both made uh, percentage for both types of field goals was the same um, from 1975 to 1992. Starting in 1992, however, the percentage of made three-point shots increased substantially from 50% to 70 over 70%. In contrast, anyway, you can see. So, and then it ends up with these data indicate the type of percentage varied with the type of shot cartridge attempted. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, you could, you could there's various different ways you could perhaps end this, end this from and get away from the hard numbers here. Uh, but it's it's a message that you're trying to get across about these data. Um, uh, and and it's a little bit it's it's you know not as close to the numbers as, as in the meat of the paragraph that's given up in the previous sentences. So, to crap to to, to uh, kind of uh, summarize why this paragraph is better. So we have a thesis or topic sentence that gives a sense of what's entire paragraph, what's going on. It gives us you know, signals to the reader what he or she should expect as as they go through the paragraph. There's enough data, but it's not overwhelming number of, of, of data points, I would argue. And then there's words, I think we used it in the previous version also, words like however, uh, uh, in contrast, um, that help guide the reader through between the different sentences, something to, to keep in mind. And we'll talk more about that point, uh, that the, 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 words, the, the use of these words like however, in, con in contrast. And then finally, the paragraph ended with, you know, just just a very modest step away from the data, something that you want to uh, uh, emphasize. And so this version em emphasized just the fact that it varied over time. Um, this emphasized, you know, it could have been something more about the made layups, how that decreased, or be more positive, the fact that the three-point shots increased at the end of that time period. And so this this. Last pair, last sentence of the paragraph could um, could uh, you know is basically what you want the reader to take away from the data and, and take away from the paragraph. Now again, um, as I think about uh, good paragraphs of my own, I think I have written a few good paragraphs, but also of, of other writers, there they may not end with this type of uh, sentence. It depends on what is follows it, of course. But it's something to think about with your paragraph, especially for something that's kind of really dense with information. Okay, so one thing that really kind of uh, separates um, technical writing from other types of writing is the use of numbers data um, to, to uh, that you're discussing. And and as I kind of mentioned yesterday, we use these numbers to support our point that we're trying to make. Um, and so so one thing. Um, is to how to use them, and you want to use them in a way to um, to bolster what you're trying to say. So this is okay. Um, it does have some numbers, 
but I pointed out it's, it's a little bit overkill. It has too many numbers. At the minimum, you could probably just get rid of this and just kind of concentrate on the, the two extremes of the, of the record. Um, but this is a bit more informative because it, 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 you know, we have to kind of see. Now, this is pretty easy to see that there's this big decrease between 55 and 15. But other times, um, it may not be so obvious. And so here we can, we can uh, in this second version, um, uh, you know, the, the author has calculated how big of a decrease that is. And, and then backed up with the actual numbers. And notice how it, um, uh, the author is also uh, rounded out. Uh, now this rounded out to, rather than saying 55, 55.5, which is you know, a bit more information that we really need. Um, all I really need to know, right, is, is roughly about 50%. And then it decreased to even less than 10% um, for the made layups. Um, actually, I wonder if I made the wrong numbers here. But the point I'm trying to make is that we're using numbers. They're, they're not exactly the ones that are in the figure, um, but they're close enough to give the, the reader an idea of what's going on. Um, so that's, that's the difference between the numbers themselves, the data themselves, and you writing about them, is to give these um, calculations or, or ways of massaging the data or presenting it that's more palatable, more understandable, and makes your point more effectively than just listing the numbers that's given here. Okay, um, so almost near the end. Um, so in general, paragraph should be about a half a page, um, regular, uh, you know, eight and a half by 11 page. Um, so that's roughly some, you know, you can see there are five sentences, maybe 100 words. And you may have some paragraphs, again, um, uh, if you have a paragraph that goes longer than that, it may be a, a really good paragraph. So I don't want to say that paragraphs that deviate from this um, rule are necessarily bad and should be changed. Um, there are perfectly good paragraphs that are longer or shorter that um, should stay that length. However, when you see your paragraphs being much longer, let's start off with that, much longer, take a look at them and make sure that you don't have words, uh, phrases, or sentences that really don't belong there. Um, look at that thesis sentence. Um, uh, does that, this, uh, the, do all the sentences in your paragraph fit that thesis sentence? Um, you can go through and definitely want to delete words, but that's not going to, even a phrase or two, but that won't really radically change the length of the paragraph. You need to start thinking about sentences, deleting whole sentences. But often what is the case is that authors um, try to pack too much into a paragraph. Uh, there's too many ideas. And that can kind of become revealed when you kind of look at that, that first sentence, that thesis or topic sentence. And is it really, you know, do, are all the sentences in there uh, really applicable part of that, uh, follow from that thesis sentence? And so if, if the answer is no, then you have to start thinking about dividing up the paragraph into uh, one or more. So basically, there should be one idea per paragraph, or one paragraph per idea. Now, what's more uh, uh, common for beginning writers like yourselves is that you don't have a long enough paragraph. And, and this is a case where you may have a perfectly fine thesis sense, but you just haven't developed it enough. You haven't added more meat to the whole paragraph. You haven't added more information, haven't talked about the data more. Uh, the other ways of just adding more information is not so much, I, don't, I, I was about to say not new information, but it's making it richer, ma making it deeper. You're going to go in more depth, even though the main take-home message may be exactly the same. Now, another common problem is that you, s and so again, you know, if you have one short paragraph, you know, maybe that's fine. Maybe it's just perfectly placed and, and just right, you know, it's, it's correct. Um, improper for what follows, what came before it and what follows it. But if I see, and I see this, especially in um, uh, uh, papers that are written by uh, students in other countries, uh, they'll hash several short paragraphs um, in a row. And so that is a, a, a big danger sign. And so one thing is just, you know, go back to what I said here, just, you know, should probably more data and information should be added to develop it more. Uh, but another possibility is to rethink and, and, uh, and look at the organization. Now that doesn't mean you just kind of remove the space and shove all the short paragraphs together into one 
longer paragraph, um, maybe that'll solve the problem, but often it doesn't. You have to kind of think about how you get those ideas and information to fit together into one paragraph. So, uh, so uh, as I said, what more common for beginning writers is they're too short, uh, but if you find yourself going on too long, um, there are some things to think about. Uh, so I think perhaps the hardest thing is to come up with the uh, thesis sense, the topic sense. You may have, you know, you may know what data you want to discuss or what, you know, uh, ideas or graphs or whatever you want to go over. Uh, but you know, what's what's the thesis sense? What's the topic sense? And the problem is often, as I mentioned um, in the first class, is is thinking about what you really want to say. Do you know what you really want to say? Um, and this is a case where rather than sitting in front of your computer, you may want to take an old-fashioned pen and pencil out um, or in a piece of paper and, and just jot some ideas down, just words, just to kind of you know, think about a little bit about what you're trying to say as, and, and not worry at, at first about too much about the, you know, how the sentence will be constructed. But, but just make sure that you know what you want to say. Now another problem is that you, you don't really need to have that thesis or topic sentence cover everything in that paragraph. You remember how, going back to the base, uh, baseball, the, the basketball um, graph, um, the thesis sentence that I had in the last version of the paragraph didn't have anything about whether the, the uh, percentages stayed constant or changed or whatever. It just said we looked at them. And notice we, I used the we, the plural. Uh, first person, I think it's a, it was fine. It gives a more active voice. Anyway, it just said we looked at the data for the whole this period of time. Um, it didn't say anything about about the changes, so it didn't have everything about the paragraph. But it it it, it did adequately signal to the reader that we're going to be talking about these uh, two types of shots and how the percentages changed over time. And that was enough. I think that set the tone for for the paragraph and gave the reader an idea what to expect in the, in the paragraph. Now another problem is, is that maybe you just are trying to fit too much into the paragraph, too many ideas, in which case you're not going to be able to come up with a good thesis or topic sense because you're just trying to do too much there. And so then the, then the, uh, the, the solution of course is to write more than one paragraph, divide up the ideas into, um, into separate paragraphs. So again, there should be really only one idea per paragraph. And again, if you come if you have problems coming up with that thesis or topic sense, you may have um, just again too many ideas that you're trying to get across. Okay, I think that's it. Um, oh, I forgot there's one other actually this is a problem. This is a, a little uh, exercise that you can go through one of several that I'm assigned. Um, and I want you to take a look at this paragraph here, and then you're going to give be given. Um, you are given here, and I'll reproduce. I think I'm. A, I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do this, but I'll probably put all the exercises together, perhaps in a PowerPoint. Um, and uh, the first one will be what's the best topic sense for this paragraph. And I hope after listening to this, you'll be able to uh, pick the correct one. Um, so with that, um, happy uh, paragraph writing.